Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and of course it is the first Friday of the month, so that means new Gems of War Mythic. So today we're going to be going over the new Mythic Troop of the Tur Turquoise Emperor. He is available in Glory Gem Guild and VIP chests for this week, and then we'll be in the drop table with everything else. As far as this troop is concerned, he is interesting. Uh, he's basically inverse Karandera as far as his traits are. He has a 50% chance to bless all allies when matching four or more gems, whereas Karandera, of course, does the inverse of that. 50% chance to curse all enemies when taking for a extra turn. Unfortunately, it does not have Impervious like Karandera. It has the Sky Ancestry, though to a degree it kind of will gain Impervious in a sense once it gains its bless. But prior to then, it does not have it, meaning it could be stunned out of this final trait prior to it actually triggering this uh, final trait. While Karandera could be cursed stunned out of it, uh, that is a lot less likely than simply just being stunned off of, like elementals or something. So this one is a little bit more of a liability when it comes to utilizing this. But compared to other things that we have for four times blessing in the game, it is among one of the absolute strongest for doing so. The biggest downside I would say is more so his ability. It is a pretty underwhelming average damage uh, ability. Uh, there's even legends that hit for essentially this exact same amount. We're going to be using him one of the teams on the cheaper team. But he does not hit that hard. It's just a pretty standard AoE that you'd expect from a legend for like 16 mana cost or so. For 24 mana cost. Uh, it is still boosted by the uh, Bless Allies. But uh, the only extra benefit you really get from it is all the extra mana that you're giving to all other allies. This does not apply to himself, but does apply to your other allies. And would on average give you about, what, about 7-ish or so, give or take a little bit. Uh, so that's okay. Obviously, in the sense, he is making up for almost all of his mana costs in that regard. But that mana could get wasted if they're already at full because you're mass mana accumulating or something similar. So not all the mana he would accumulate would fully actually set onto every single character. Not to mention, it does not apply to himself. So he himself, even if all your other allies do get up from it, will be at zero mana. So unless when the more mana accumulated, I can get him back up pretty quickly. Uh, I won't exactly do anything for getting his own uh, mana up. And of course, uh, biggest downside, unlike Karandir or similar things, no extra turn potential. He will end his turn as he does this. And uh, his because of that, he doesn't even have any way to try to synergize into his uh, trigger as well. Like Karandera can do some skulls, which, you know, the skulls could extra turn, and that extra turn could trigger curse. But he can't do the same. Uh, nothing on his ability will trigger his bless because nothing does any extra turn potential uh, because it has no board control, no gem creation or anything like that. So overall, it's a slightly above average mythic. Definitely a utility trip you're not going to use too often. Uh, there's a lot of situations where you're still going to use Beatrix and similar ways to cleanse. Uh, Voice of Orpheus and the such. However, this is a lingering cleanse, if nothing else, as Bless both, assuming you're not cursed, will both cleanse you of all status effects as well as prevent any future status effects until the Bless goes away, either from you taking a skull or doing an ability, or from them uh, cursing or cleansing, uh, or I should say dispelling your ability. So anyways, let's go and mess around, try to see if we can get this troop, and well, obviously we're going to get this troop <laughs> with as many keys kind of as possible, and then go and uh, see what it can do. And uh, hopefully uh, the teams aren't too bad. We ended up building a divine team, a uh, cheaper team. And I think the other one is a just AOE spam team that uses uh, Ashtara because Ashtara actually boost ratio is from Bless. Uh, there aren't too many Bless boost ratios within the game. The biggest issue with Bless boost ratio and a similar uh, few ones like Enchant and such is as of the current state of the game, unless they fixed it in very recent times, but I don't believe they have. But in the current state of the game, um, whenever you have something like a Bless boost ratio, the boost ratio checks after you have removed your status effect. So, for example, uh, let's say, of course, P boost ratio is from Bless, 4 damage per um, Bless on your team. If all four of your troops are Bless, the best you could ever get is a 3 boost ratio, not a 4, as he can't boost ratio from himself, as the check takes place after the Bless has already been removed from himself from doing the ability. This will probably be changed at some point in the future. I'm still surprised it hasn't been. <laughs> Maybe it's something with the coding that uh, they just physically can't end up changing it. But hopefully that will at some point as it will make all blessed boost ratios and champ boost ratios and similar things a little bit more viable as it would increase the max that they could do from three up to four, which, you know, is the way that most of them work with based on the status effects based on your team. But there we go, a few hundred keys. We end up getting it. Obviously, we don't really need more than one, though I guess technically you could in the sense that you'd have two 50%, which is not 100%, it's two individual 50% chances, which is a pretty high percent chance, but not guaranteed, so you're not really going to end up needing more than one. But let's go and see what he can do. First, let's go upgrade him, get all of his uh, perks. We'll start on orbs for the sake of speed here. Get him fully maxed out. Don't accidentally click on <laughs> an orb of power and uh, should be good to go. Uh, he is a mage, so he actually does gain six damage to all enemies if you so want to do that. If you have a, a lot of spear of the uh, metals, you might want to end up doing that. However, uh, we're going to leave him as is for now. 
uh, as I'm not quite sure how much we'll ultimately be uh, using him going forward. Oh yeah, I forgot he's already leveled because we did that. Anyways, let's go get him into all the teams. So, uh, of course, all these teams will be in the description if you want to go and copy-paste any of them, and we'll go uh, down the line. And I'll uh, we'll try them initially in PvP. I think these can hold up in PvP. They're, uh, they're going to die to infinite loop, <laughs> because these aren't meant to get up that quick. However, most other teams they should be fine against, so let's see what we have here. Oh, that's a lost skull. <laughs> it doesn't have the extra f uh, droop at the end, though. Um, is my first team particularly tanky to skulls? No. My second one is, though. So, you know what? We're going to start with the second one, I guess, instead of starting with the first. Uh, Rope Dart, of course, very useful in this particular situation. He is skull spamming like crazy, creating a billion skulls per turn. And uh, what better way than to entangle it? And as you can see, he's already entangled because Elemental is his extra turn. And this one is actually running it with, as you could probably see, Karandera. So even if they have immune to Entangle or immune to Freeze, immune to anything else that you're doing from Elementals or Rope Dart, uh, they will still get hit. Uh, he is not immune. However, if he was immune, uh, we would still be able to go and apply it as the extra turn uh, Karandera. As you can see, not only did we land the extra turn for four times curse, so we can place any status effect on them, but we also got the four times blessed, so they can't place any status effect on us. Not like they have any, but if they did, <laughs> uh, they wouldn't be able to place any on us. Isn't he a burning gem? I could have sworn he had like burning gems. They got a different troop. But anyways, uh, but if he did, he wouldn't be able to burn us. All right, so obviously, uh, let's go get a rope dart up a little bit. Try to get, actually, well, I should be doing Thrall up uh, right here. Uh, get that mana going. Of course, he does have a lot of skulls. He is hitting through in Tango right now, so he shouldn't be able to hit us for too much. But those five damage pluses are going to be hitting through. And of course, he could get untangled at any time. Though, uh, one nice effect of Curse, um, even though it's not utilized necessarily a whole lot for it, uh, one of the other big benefits it has, other than just allowing you to place every stats effect, is it does make it less likely that they will cleanse. The natural cleanse late within a Gems of War is 10% per turn, so 10%, 20%, 30%, so on and so forth. However, while they are cursed, it goes 5, 10, 15, 20, by increments of 5, rather than by increments of uh, 10, making it take uh, substantially longer for them to get rid of any kind of effect that might be on them. So he's going to be entangled for quite some time. Uh, we don't have any alignment on this yellow. I'm trying to cast this. I guess we'll stick a skull for now. Uh, to some degree, he's kind of giving us the skulls we need to win. I wish we could get some yellow alignment so I can actually do it. Though I guess he's stunned at this point, so we're not getting too many more skulls. Uh, he doesn't have any extra turn here. I'm just going to go for the poke. Oh yeah, we can finally go for our AoE too, but uh, since everything has full mana right now, we ideally want to go and use pretty much every ability we have on our team. Get rid of all of that, and then go for it. So we'll go for this here, get a bunch of explodes, get our Karandera, go for our poke, get the other one poked. That one will end up dying from that. No extra turn, but we can go for our AoE here. Uh, that will give mana to everyone else. Of course, we could also do that with Thrall if we want to. But we'll go do it with this. Uh, let me go throw that rope dart first. Just get it out of the way. Throw down our AoE, which will, uh, as you can see here, it does bless off of um, three. So it says. Uh, but we can actually see it right here. So let's see which one it does. Have they fixed it? I don't think they have. So if they have fixed it, it should do 63 damage. If they have not fixed it, it should do 59. And we can see that right here. So 63 or 59. It did 59, so they still have not fixed the bless issue that has been in the game for uh, since the status effect has existed. Uh, hopefully they will at some point, though. Um, so yeah, as you can see there, the bless got removed before the check on if we had the bless. So we only hit him for 59 rather than what should have been 63. Even the card says it should have been 63. But uh, of course, it uh, did not actually happen. So uh, here's a uh, insta-kill team. That's a little scary, but we have a pseudo-infinite loop of Ishtara. Uh, Star not used as much because, of course, the Bless boost ratio can only go up to 3, not 4. However, they did buff it a while back, a couple years ago, several years ago, at this point, maybe like 4 years ago, where they gave it an extra gem spawn, same as uh, Elema Grimm, and same as, I believe, that new one, too. I uh, just retroactively gave it when it came out, the one that does, like, brown cursed gems. Uh, but this one, yeah, it does do 9, uh, can do up to 12, which is a little bit less than the other one, similar to it, that could do up to 13. However, uh, it does get to do it pretty easily, now that we could just Bless spam off of this. It also gets to Bless uh, off itself, too. To get a little bit extra 50% chance to bless a random ally when its turn begins. So you'll be able to start with a bless. As you can see, our hero has a bless because of that now. So we basically want to go get our Divine Protector up. Get as much mana as we possibly can for that. Throw this down. Get a really lucky Cascade, apparently. Uh, we even got a Gnome here, so that's going to help a little bit. Not sure what his hero was, but it's not there anymore. Uh, we'll go for that. So how on earth did you miss? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, well, there goes the Gnome. Uh, at least he'll probably waste his turn trying to run away rather than doing uh, like a, a Zolgoth or something. So to some degree, that might be okay. Uh, we don't have anything here. I'm trying to see any kind of big cascade we could try going for again. I'm probably just going for red to yellow, staircase it down, get a little bit of mana. Uh, we do have Divine Ishbalo on this team for 40% mana start, just to help get the team rolling a little bit. Um, we do have Ishtara. Do we have the full boost ratio right now? How many blesses do we have? Uh, we have two. Well, technically three, but as we mentioned before, the third one does not trigger. So we will get 11 gem spawn from it. We'll try it at 11 gem spawn. We got it. Nice. Um, we did not get the bless from that extra turn, unfortunately. From the new mythic so we can't utilize that we'll just take this for now hope he doesn't cast he goes for the cast he did not run away though but he did get full mana to the other one 
We still go for the 11 spawn. Uh, do we have an alignment on this? We do. So let me actually go for that first. Get our skull poke there. Get him down. Ideally, we get even more skulls so we could poke that out. I would need two, and we currently don't have two. I could try for the extra turn. Uh, we only have two other blesses in play since his own does not count. That's going to be 11. We'll go test the 11 uh, because if we can hit it with any follow-up like that, boom, it's dead. And yeah, we just rinse and repeat until we get a little bit more mana here. Uh, we have a skull. That's not enough to kill. Uh, we're about to get this thing for an AoE. So, oh no, but it's going to be two turns from now. And if I take that skull, he's going to do the brown. So you know what? Why don't you take brown or self? Oh, but we want to use brown for barrier on this team. So we'll take a red for now. He'll do that. We'll get our free barrier back up after he just hit us. And this should hopefully be enough. We go for the star. Hopefully get our extra turn. Go for it again. Uh, did we not get our bless again? That's a really unfortunate. Ideally, what happens here is most of the time we extra turn, we'll regain bless. And then, you know, we'll have the three. Even if our hero takes skull, ideally we'll re-bless and uh, be good to go. But unfortunately, oh, wait, you know what? But the skull happened after the fact. So <laughs> he actually would have re removed his skull, but still. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the premise of the team. Using trying to use a star as uh, AoE. Uh, it's a little bit weaker of the other dragons just because of how hard it is to get bless. But uh, this guy does make it a little bit easier. Though still pretty luck based with the 50% thing uh, that he had. Sometimes you get really lucky on it. Like when we used the Karandera battle, uh, we end up getting it uh, instantly. We got both both of them to trigger their 50%. And on this battle, uh, we struggled to even get him to trigger it once. Uh, even though we we're getting a little bit of less from Ishtar itself. Anyways, next let's go for the final team here, which is uh, the low level, low rarity team. Uh, a really weird trip that exists in the game that is basically the same damage as him is Vanya Solmorn. It is a very easy legend to end up getting from the faction of Silver Necropolis. You probably already have it laying around, and if you don't, as a newer player, you can simply just throw some shards at Silver Necropolis. You'll get it pretty easily within a couple hundred, at most a couple thousand uh, Kia shards. And this basically is the new mythic, in a sense. Uh, as far as damage is concerned, for 15 mana cost, it does the exact same AoE. And I mean exact. It deals damage to all enemies boosted by blessed allies at a 4 times boost ratio. What does this guy do? One damage higher... Uh, to all enemies, boosted by blessed allies at a 4 times boost ratio. Uh, this one does it for 24 mana, this one does it for 15, at a 9 lower mana cost. The only difference is this summons a Silver Necropolis troop, whereas this, of course, gives a ton of mana to the rest of your team, but not to himself, only to the other three allies. And, of course, your traits are a little bit different. This has a 50% chance to bless all allies when matching for an extra turn, whereas this only blesses one singular ally. However, it is guaranteed rather than being chance. Well, assuming it's not stunned. Uh, both of them do not have a mean stun, so they have to depend on their own bless. So if you don't even have Tukoris Emperor, well, just go double Vanya and you pretty much already have him in a sense. Not exactly, but to enough of a degree where, um, you know, you kind of already do. So let's go up against this. All low rarity stuff. Orb of Winter you get for 250 wins on Frostmage, which is already a pretty good hero class. Uh, Angry Mob just being an ultra rare just randomly in the drop table. Uh, this uh, we already mentioned. You get it from Silver Necropolis from Thermic Chaos Shards there. And of course, uh, despite this being high rarity, this is the uh, thing that's based around the Turquoise uh, Emperor, uh, which just came out today. So, let's go and get a bunch of mana, get things rolling. Ideally, we want to go straight for Angry Mob and get as much mana as we can. Uh, do that, get everything to full mana, throw down AoEs until we win, and it's pretty much the premise. Oh no, he has Submerge! <laughs> hmm, we got a problem here. Uh, Submerge does hard counter AoE spam, and since we are not using the Karandera version like we were earlier, uh, we do not have a counter on this team necessarily to uh, Submerge. So we're going to have to let him take a skull. Isn't that the one that does extra to green? You know what? I'm going to go for the angry mob here. Uh, so, of course, we can keep resummoning off an of angry mob. We can keep resummoning off of Vanya. Uh, we have plenty of resummon here. Here is kind of meant to die, in a sense, on this team. Because we're just going to keep resummoning right back. So, unfortunately, he does have some submerge. Uh, this team does not have counter to it. Uh, you could put it on your hero. Like going a barrier on brown hero class that has dispel. Um, but that's uh, the only thing we could really fit in there. Unless we go replace out this thing for something that has curse or something similar. But I figured at that point it'd be a little bit too similar to the uh, Karandera team. As that was the whole reason for Karandera, in a sense, on the other team. Aside from being able to place Elementalists' uh, Entangle, Rope Darts Entangle, Freeze, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the other reason was to make sure that these AoEs can actually land. Because if they do gain that Submerge, well, they're going to be dodging every single one of them. Alright, so he gets a lot of skulls there. Shouldn't really matter. Obviously, if Angry Mob goes down, we'll just summon another Angry Mob. If that Angry Mob goes down, we'll summon another Angry Mob. And the cycle continues. And if you don't want uh, Angry Mob, we can just do this, and boom, we get a different troop here. Uh, as you can see, we get this little tank thing. Well, it's not really that good at tanking, but he shall do so. Uh, anything just pretty much existing there will tank to some degree. Uh, do you do anything? No, you can drain some mana, though, so I guess we'll go for that. Uh, unfortunately, our AoE doesn't really do anything here, so let's go for the skull and kill it out from there. There we go, low rarity team. A lot of uh, AoE, a lot of resummoning. Doesn't really work against a merge, but has pretty much everything else it needs to function as a team. Uh, and you can replace out hero class for uh, that if you happen to have a level 70 hero class that has the spell uh, available. But anyways, guys, that's a rundown on all of the teams. As far as the verdict on this mythic, I would say uh, it's similar to Karandera, and that's a utility troop you would very rarely use. 
I personally feel like I never use Karandura. I definitely use Enraged Karandura a bit more these days compared to normal Karandura due to its immune to insta-kill, uh, which of course normal Karandura does not uh, have. But overall, it's just a utility trip you'd ever so occasionally use. I don't feel like this is a replacement for Beatrix or even a replacement necessarily for Voice of Orpheus in a sense. Uh, that are different ways of cleansing consistently. Uh, the biggest benefit that he has is he's really good at four times blessing our team, which can be good against uh, lingering effects. So if you know something is going to constantly be placing some kind of effect on you, that would be really annoying. For example, uh, Mana Drain potentially, like if they have those blue Mana Drain gems, and you know you're going to be hit by a lot of those constantly. Uh, or even Book in Guild Wars, uh, you know you're going to constantly be hit by that and try to get Mana Drained. You can end up blessing up, because one thing Impervious does not have that Bless does have is immune to Mana Drain. Uh, he actually naturally has this, luckily. Uh, immune to Mana Drain, Science, Fairy Fire, blah, blah, blah. But he has, does naturally have the immune to Mana Drain, uh, which is actually something that Karandera does not have. Um, Pervious does not include it. But Bless does. So you can go from a troop that doesn't have it, like Karandera, and then get Bless on it, and then boom, now it uh, still had the benefit of its previous Impervious, but also has immune to Mana Drain. So there are some niche situations where you'd bring this instead of Beatrix and the such. However, the overall ability value that you would get from Beatrix and similar troops are just way higher than what Turquoise Emperor will do. But he's definitely a utility trip I would advise getting at some point, and you can this week at any point. Otherwise, you'll need to get him in the next Shen Tang event for about 4,000 diamonds, so good time to go do it now in the Glory Gem Guild or VIP chest. If you guys still have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. All of the teams that we just went over, if you want to go copy-paste any of them into the game, are in the description. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Goodbye, everyone, and thanks for watching.